Ladies and gentlemen, we have another pajama review. Actually, it's more like reviewing cards in pajamas. Yeah, that, that's, that's more appropriate, actually. All right, so uh, the Legends of Runeterra team just released a YouTube video uh, announcing the first spoilers from the upcoming expansion will set uh, Empires of the Ascended. That's going to be coming on March the 3rd. And a new region is being added to the game, and it's the Sharima region. That was my phone. Sorry. <laughs> um, anyway. Uh, we're starting off with uh, no new champions today. Uh, usually the first day of spoiler season, there are no new champions anyway. So, but we did, uh, they ditched off a new keyword. It is called countdown, which is kind of appropriate given that this is the first day of spoiler season. So it's almost like let the countdown begin. Get it? But anyway, we're going to talk about countdown. They did show buried sun disc here, but we'll touch on buried sun disc later on so new keyword countdown uh round start i count down one at zero destroy me and activate the countdown effect pretty interesting um i don't have too much to say on it because they only showed one this is the only countdown card that they actually uh showed at least for today so i'm curious to see what else is going to be in this set uh, again we'll talk more about buried sun disc later on but like if you're just going off this one card, then countdown sounds bad. But again, this is the first day of spoiler season. Uh, we should ex be expecting a lot more cards um, over the coming days to be revealed. Uh, I believe if it if this is the same deal as the Call of the Mountain, then we should get close to 100 cards, 100 new cards um, by March 3rd. Oh, by the way, March 3rd is. Uh, the last day of the season so you have until then to get to masters if that's that's kind of your deal although the <laughs> if anyone's trying to enter the seasonal tournament uh you basically need to be a masters now <laughs> like really close if you're not as you got a day less than a day to climb up there and then still get lp anyway i'm rambling i'm rambling i'm rambling we're not talking about the seasonal tournament All right, let's check out these other cards here. All right, so now let's talk about the seven cards that got uh, revealed today. And shout out to Cosmic for putting together this graphic. Um, Cosmic's been putting together these graphics uh, pretty much every spoiler season, ever since uh, the game started. So big shouts out to him to uh, for putting this together and providing this resource for the community and for anybody any content creators that want to use it um feel free to check out his twitch stream in the top right corner there that you see there um cosmic plays is is also the same for youtube as well if you want to check out his youtube channel <clears throat> but anyway so let's start off with destin poro Destin Poro, uh, one mana, one, one round start. If you've leveled a champion, transform me into exalted Poro and exalted Poro is a one mana two, two that reads, I have three random keywords. So this is kind of giving me a uh, plunder Poro vibes from Bilgewater. This is, this is the obligatory Poro, by the way, for Sharima. Um, it's pretty much a given at this point that every new region is going to have some type of one mana Poro added to it. And every portal that comes out with every new set seems to be power crept just a little bit. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I like this card. Uh, I don't know how strong it's going to end up being for Poro decks. You, Cause usually Poro decks, dedicated Poro decks end up being in Freljord. So if you're going to do dedicated Poro with this Poro card, it's probably going to be Sharima plus Freljord and you're probably running Braum. Um, because he's just the best champion for Poros. Uh, but this is nice that unlike Plunder Poro, like you don't have to with Plunder Poro, you have to actually hit the Nexus 
uh, in order for Plunder Portal to get two random keywords. And then this one just gets three once you level up a champion. Um, so you probably want to pair this with Braum and then another champion that's easy to level up. Um, Freljord doesn't really have any champions that level up quickly. Even Braum can take a while. So your second champion is probably going to be from Shirima, although we don't know the Shirima champions yet. Although I'll, I'll get to talking about that once we talk about Buried Sun Disc, actually, regarding what champions are get we're getting, at least what my my prediction is, uh, based on what we saw today with the video reveal on YouTube. But yeah, not too much else to say about Exalted Por about Destin Poro. So let's talk about Buried Sun Disc. All right, so Buried Sun Disc is a one mana landmark. Uh, at the start of the game, you draw one of me if all your cards are Shuriman. Uh, countdown is 25. So once that countdown hits zero, you restore the Sun Disc. And when an Ascended ally levels up, advance me 10 rounds. And the restored Sun Disc uh, immediately draw, draw one of all your Ascendants. And for the rest of the game, your level two Ascendants are level three. So that is very interesting. We are getting a mechanic that allows champions to go up to level three, not just level two. So that does sound a little scary. Um, I don't know if the Sharima champions are going to be adjusted on their power level just based on this simple fact. Uh, they prob My guess is they probably won't be because I, I feel like uh, Call of the Mount was a big power creep for the game. And I don't see that really slowing down because you have to make the Sharima cards good in order for people to want to play your game. <laughs> like if a new set is weak, then no one's going to play the game. No one's going to play it. So. I think this set will probably be even more powerful than Call of the Mountain was in a different way, though. But anyway, Buried Sun Disc. So let's see. Barry Sundisk, going to be used in Allegiance decks, 100% uh, Shirima decks. The one concern now is uh, Shirima, even though I did state that Shirima is going to have to be good in order for it to be attractive to play, uh, there is still that concern that a mono Shirima deck might not be good enough. Mono Targon was pretty much good enough. Uh, at least as an allegiance deck where you could splash another region like usually it was shadow isles with like the zoe Ophelios decks that get that get played or zoe aurelion soul back when grant before grand plaza got nerfed um but yeah i'm, I'm expecting buried sun disc to to see play in uh mono sharima decks just because that's the only way you're going to be able to consistently uh get the countdown off for buried sun disc i feel like and Shreem is probably going to have some type of mechanic that allows you to allows you, your champions to level up fairly quickly or the champions themselves will just be able to level up very fairly quickly. But speaking of which, uh, some people might be asking, well, all, there's all this talk of Ascendant. What are the Ascended? So according to Shreem lore, and this is my very limited knowledge of League of Legends lore, this is just what I've been hearing. Um, three of three of the Sharima champions are ascended, at least three of them. Uh, Azir, Nasus, and Renekton. So based on what this card is, the text that's on this card, and based on the reveal video we saw on YouTube today for, on the Legends of Runeterra channel, my guess is that we are going to get at least those three champions from Sharima. I don't know if we're going to get four champions or five. Uh, usually the new region starts off by getting four champions, but they might bump that number up to five just because the champion count is actually off right now. Targon actually has more champions than any other region right now with the Aphelios release <clears throat> there. Uh, they have one extra champion. Uh, ahead of every other region right now. So not all the other regions have to care, uh, catch up to Targon as far as number of champions available. So, but yeah, my guess is we're going to get Renekton, Azir, and uh, Nasus. 
at least those three and probably one or two other champions uh, but we'll we'll see we'll see but I don't see buried sun disc being played outside of mono Shirima I just can't see it now again like we need to see what the rest of the cards are maybe there's a way to uh, activate buried sun disc consistently uh, if uh, without having to play without having to build your entire deck out of Sharima cards. But I just feel like it's just more consistent if you all your cards are streaming because you'll you draw this and you can just play it turn one and then just start start the countdown it immediately. <clears throat> but yeah, it'll be interesting. Uh, I think things will get fleshed out. Uh, as as the spoiler season progresses and we know like what each of the Shurima champions do. All right, esteemed Hierophant. Three mana, three, four. When I'm summoned, advance your buried sun disc two rounds. So this is one of the cards that seems to is meant to be played with sun disc. At least that's the way it seems to be designed. Three mana, three, four is really good stats. Um, Riven's a three mana three four. The only reason Riven doesn't get played is it she she has other issues. It's not because of her stat line. Like that's not the problem with Riven. But like like a three mana three four is pretty insane. Uh the only thing better than that was Loyal Badger Bear at three mana when it used to be a four four and then they nerfed it to a three four. Um, because it was literally everywhere. <laughs> People were playing Badger Bear and Grizzled Ranger, who makes Badger Bear when he dies. So that was that was kind of it was a little toxic, a little bit, but yeah, don't see this being played outside of buried sun disc. It doesn't seem to be a reason why. Interesting that it says when I'm summoned. So once again, I always make this point whenever I see my brain just immediately goes to this synergy. Um, whenever I see when I'm summoned, I just go right to oh synergy with Shadow Isles, <laughs> just because. Shadows has so many effects where like you kill your own unit and, and resummon it or revive a unit that died. So that whole like reanimator thing where like you don't have to play the card. The card doesn't have to be played from hand, basically. So and anything that allows you to play this card without having to play it from hand or pay pay the three mana for it, um, it'll have synergy. This card will have synergy with those cards. Most of them are in Shadow Isles, like Chronicler of Ruin. Uh, that's the classic one. Uh, Miss Call, stuff like that. Or even Gluttony now, or if you kill a two mana unit and if it has last breath, you can summon a three mana unit. And the way to do that most cons consistently is if a Steam Hierophant is a... I don't even know if I'm saying Hierophant right, to be honest. I, I forgot how to pronounce this word. <laughs> anyway. But yeah, if it's the only three mana unit in your deck, then and you kill a curse keeper with your gluttony, then you'll summon this every time and advance your sun disc. But again, that goes back to there has to be a way for you to be able to play buried sun disc probably outside of just a mono Sharima deck. And if that's not the case, that's not going to be you're probably not going to be doing that. Probably not going to be pairing this with Shadow Oz. Probably not going to be pairing this with anything. But we'll see what else we get in the set. Who knows? All right. Devoted Council. Three mana, one six. Start of the round. If you've leveled up a champion, heal your champions and Nexus two. It's interesting. Kind of a budget Soraka. Uh, Soraka is also a three mana, one six. That, uh, that heals your allies on attack though not at the start of a round so this definitely is not as good as soraka but seems like this is just meant to survive until you're uh until you manage to level up your champions i do still think uh that shurim is gonna have to be able to level up his champions quickly uh in order for this card to see play uh that's probably going to be the case there'll probably be some type of mechanic in shurima that'll allow you to level up your champions really fast uh, that or it'll be built into the champions themselves but yeah 
this doesn't have to be played with buried sun disc, which is, but it's probably nice that it is. It's probably best in buried sun disc decks. We'll see though. Again, we'll see what the rest of the cards show uh, when those get revealed. Four mana, golden ambassador. Golden ambassador, four mana, three, two, allegiance draw champion and granted plus two, plus two. Again, this ties into buried sun disc. Runeterra tends to do this. Uh, I mean, every card game does this, but Runeterra tends to do this thing where uh, all the cards that get revealed are like, they have these cards that are meant to be played together. Like they're, ki they're kind of archetypes that are built for you type of thing. And that is important to have in card games. Um, generally, I'm not, a, I'm not a fan of it, but I do realize that it is, it is important to have that in a card game. Uh, like other examples, like like dragons, like you have dragon decks and you have uh, you have bannerman decks and you have what else? Those those are the only ones that I can think of off the top of my head right now. But there are definitely others. Frostbite to a certain extent, it's kind of like that. There's definitely others though. Um, so I feel like just the way the game is designed, that's like. There's just all these different packages in the game that are designed to work together. Leon is another one. Nightfall's another one. Nightfall's basically almost the entire deck is built for you. As far as like like a dedicated Nightfall deck. Uh, there's very few cards you're going to put in a Nightfall deck that like are different. There's very little room for flexibility in a Nightfall deck. That's what I'm trying to say. <clears throat> but... I, I like this. It's probably going to be in a... It'll be in a Buried Sun Disc deck. Most likely. Don't see any... Don't see it seeing play outside of that. Alright, let's talk Voice of the Risen. Also 4 mana. 3-4. If you've leveled a champion, allies have plus 2, plus 0. So, this is a uh, as long as it's in play type of effect. Uh, more importantly, it is not allies everywhere, so it's not going to buff allies that are still in your deck. The allies have to be in play along with this. Um, but it seems cool is that as long as you've leveled a champion, then this will happen when when you play it. Uh, this one seems a little bit. This this one's definitely more flexible than Golden Ambassador. This is the one that uh, could see play in other decks that aren't Mono Sharima. But we'll see. Four mana, three four is eh on stats. It's, it's all right. It's probably passable just because there's so many four mana. There's we've had so many metas where like four mana units are understated, and people play the the popular four mana units got played for their abilities, not not their stat line. Like I just think to like Grizzled Ranger, Vanguard Bannerman. Twisted Fate is a four mana two two, but you don't play Twisted Fate because he's a two two. You play him for all the other reasons he's good, <laughs> all of his abilities. So, Zap Sprayfin, two 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 Flyer, two two Elusive. You don't play Zap for the stats. You play Zap for uh, the ability to fetch a spell out of your deck, and you get one spell mana back on top of that. So, yeah. We'll see. This is definitely going to be the probably an option if you don't have any better options at the four mana slot for whatever Sharima deck you're running. And finally, we have Ascended Rise, seven mana, slow spell, level up all level one Ascended allies. I don't want to write this one off yet. It seems bad but it's probably not going to be that bad. I was thinking at first, uh, the first thing that popped up in my mind is how how fast can I cast this? And the answer is turn four. The problem is like, if you try to go for a turn four send his rise, then <laughs> you need to have your champions in play already. You only, you only have three rounds to do that. So unless Sharima is going to get cheap champions, uh, I don't see anybody trying to go for the play pattern of trying to cast Ascend as Rise on turn four. This is probably just going to be like a, a late game play or a mid to late game play, which is fine. Um, again, we'll we'll see. Uh, 
Yeah, I don't have too much else to say on this one. I'm kind of taking a wait and see approach on Ascendant's Rise. I don't want to just write it off and just call it bad. We haven't even seen any of the champions yet anyway. So how powerful this card will be will be based on uh, on the how good the champions are. Or how quickly you want to level them up. Or when, when you want to level them up. At what point in the game. So... But that's all the cards we got today. Uh, I imagine we're going to get a champion reveal tomorrow. Uh, like I said, pretty sure we're going to get Azir, Nasus, and Renekton. And I haven't, I have not looked at any spoilers. Uh, I've, I have been hearing about spoilers for the past couple of weeks, but I have not looked at any on purpose because I didn't want to know what the new cards were. And I didn't want to know what the new region was, although in the back of my mind, I was like, it's probably Sharima. Like, I wasn't surprised. I said that in a previous video, actually, uh, when they when they did the roadmap for earlier this year. And they, they said that the new set's gonna be, gonna come out in March and it'll be, Sharima will be the, new, the next region. So. So don't come at me with, with spoilers. I, do, I don't wanna know. I don't want to know anything <laughs> until it's actually spoiled until it's officially spoiled. Uh, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed another pajama review and uh, my back is still, uh, I'm still recovering, but I am slowly getting there very, very slowly, slowly, but surely I'm getting a little bit better each day. Hopefully in the next week or two, I should be back at 100%. If not, I'm going to be very concerned. So, yeah, that is it from me. I'm going to I'll try to pump these out as much as I can. Uh, I really do want to cover the Sharima spoilers as they get released. But uh, with me recovering from back issues for the past several weeks, it's it might be a little tougher this time around, but I will do my best. Anyway, I will catch you guys later. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss future content. And be sure to uh, hit the like button if you like this video as well. It kind of lets me know you made it to the end and that you uh, that you enjoyed your stay. I'm copying things from Twitch streamers now. Okay, it's, it's time to go. I'm probably going to go back and lay down. <laughs> so I can rest my back again. All right, I'll catch you guys next time.